From your Revere TV studio on Broadway, it's the Revere Review with your hosts, Gabby DiGiulio and Ed DeVoe. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Revere Review, a bi weekly program dedicated to covering news in Revere. I'm Deb DiGiulio. And I'm Ed DeVoe. With this program, we hope to be able to highlight important news items affecting our city and to also highlight and promote other activities such as fundraisers and other events of special note. And what would a local news program be without a sports section? We also plan to present local sports news with our team of local sports experts, Peter DiGiulio and Michael Hinojosa. So please grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and enjoy the Revere Review. First up in this week's news, we have a story about the McKinley School bonding issues recently approved by the City Council. The Revere City Council held two marathon sessions this past week, culminating in votes to approve the bonds needed to fund the building of a new stadium and the building of the Sergeant James J. Hill School, which will replace the current McKinley School. Also passed was approval of bond issues to purchase of properties where the new school will be built and money to purchase a ball field at St. Mary's Ballpark and to build three new ball fields. Leaving nothing to chance, the school department personnel and parents of McKinley school students came to Monday's meeting in force to voice their support for the new school. Many parents and even some students provided details about the difficult conditions that exist at the McKinley and the need for new, a new school now. There were many people in attendance, so much so that an overflow area in the adjacent City Hall Auditorium was set up to seat them. Two days previous to the council meeting, the mayor, along with a host of other city administration and finance personnel, and school superintendent Dr. Dakin, presented the city council with the financial particulars regarding the state of the city's finances the cost of the bonds, etc. The one bond issue that was not approved at Monday night's meeting was for the renovation of the current M McKinley School to create an office building that would support school department administration operations as well as provide space for rent to general businesses. The mayor in his remarks indicated that the renovation would in the end not cost the city much money or money at all due to the fact that the school department would be paying for rent within their approved budget and that the rent would basically cover the cost of the bond. The City Council, however, felt they needed more time to, to review this situation and scheduled a follow-up meeting and discussion at a later date. In other development news, For Kids Only recently announced plans to build a facility at 85 Broadway. They plan to add a second level to the existing structure and to host approximately 120 students in daily after-school activities. Many of the counselors expressed their excitement over this new addition to the city. However, many people we heard from are wondering where the parents of these 120 students are going to park. 85 Broadway has parking spots available. However, there is concern that the number of spots are not adequate to support pick up and drop off resulting in congestion on Broadway. To date, a hearing has been held with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Other hearings are likely to be required to review traffic and environmental issues that have been raised due to high readings of contaminated soil. Hopefully, all the counselors are looking very carefully at the issues in this before sealing the deal on this proposal. In other news, the Mass Gaming Commission hired this week Rick Day as its executive director to oversee day-to-day -day operations of the Gaming Commission. Mr. Day comes to the job with approximately 11 years of experience in Washington State, where he managed a gambling commission approximately the same size as what is expected to be established here in Massachusetts. In other news related to the casino, Mayor Rizzo in comments to Revere TV indicated that Revere's mitigation package is fairly complete and that his administration is basically waiting for the city of Boston to catch up before finalizing the deal with Suffolk Downs. As you may remember, the mayor held a series of open hearings last year to gather input throughout the city for ideas to be included in the mitigation package. 
Since then, he's been working with city councilors and various city departments to put dollar figures on all of the ideas and has already held a number of discussions with Suffolk Downs on the mitigation package. Once the deal is finalized, the city will have up to 90 days to present the package to the city's residents, who will then vote to decide if they want a casino or not. Unsubstantiated rumors have surfaced of late indicating that the casino referendum would be presented to the voters, could be presented to the voters as early as June to coincide with the special election that will be held at that time for a senatorial replacement for John Kerry. After residents of both cities have voted, and if they approve the referendums, the whole thing goes to the Mass Gaming Commission, who will decide whether Suffolk Downs Caesars Casino bid is chosen over other bids currently on the table. And then finally, to add to the picture, maybe cloud the picture, there is a statewide group that is preparing an initiative petition for November of 2014 ballot that would seek to repeal the state's gambling legislation. So in theory, if the, gaming, if the Gaming Commission were to approve the Suffolk Downs bid before November 2014 and the initiatives were to pass, the gambling bill would be illegal in this state and all bets are off. <laughs> and we'll be back for more Revere news after these messages. You know, a mayor has the best job in the world. But the worst part of that job is getting that call. Another citizen has been shot. Another life has been lost. Another family destroyed. Too many tears. Too many eulogies. Too many funerals. Too many memorials. Enough. No more families to console. No more neighborhoods in mourning. No more makeshift memorials. No more guns tearing apart our cities. Demand a plan. Every resident in this country needs to pick up the phone. Washington needs to hear from you. Citizens, not lobbyists need to be heard. As a mayor. As a dad. As an aunt. As an uncle. As a mom. As a grandfather. Demand a plan. Demand a plan. Demand a plan. Demand a plan. And we're back with some great news. It comes as no surprise that Dr. Paul Dakin has been voted Massachusetts Superintendent of the Year 2013 by the American Association of School Administrators. The award is one of 50 given out by the association each year. Dr. Dakin received an all-expense paid trip to Los Angeles to accept the award and to participate with 49 other superintendents of the year in several learning groups. The Revere Journal quoted Dr. Dakin as saying, I don't know if the average citizen knows the high regard the Revere Public Schools are held in throughout the state. Maybe this will certainly signify to the community that the school system is a powerful entity out there in the state. Dakin did not take credit for this award alone. He credited everyone on the staff of the public schools who work so hard, make our schools and my work look good. I recently conducted an interview with Dr. Dakin for Focus on Revere discussing many issues concerning Revere students and parents. He is a true professional committed not only to today's school system, but to looking ahead to the future education of our children. Congratulations, Dr. Dakin. I am here joined with Dr. Paul Dakin, Superintendent of Schools. Uh, Dr. Dakin, if you would, give us a little bit of your background. Tell us how long you've been Superintendent of Schools with Revere before we begin. Okay, well, my career began, began uh, 39 years ago, and my first 19 years were in um, private education in Boston. Then I came to Revere in 1993 when Ed Reform began. And for two and a half years, I was the director of technology. And that meant um, working, building up the computer network, as well as responsibilities in the STEM areas, the math education from K to 12, and the science education from K to 12, as well as the computer education from K to 12. And uh, we were formulating what is, uh, at this point, a deep, rich technological environment. Um, after two and a half, three years doing that, I became assistant superintendent working with Carol Tai, and I did that for five years. And this, I think, is the end of year 12 uh, in the superintendency. Now, you said you came from a, a technological background, and, and that sparked my interest. Can you talk a little bit about the technology um, that you've been using just lately? Um, the Twitter comes to mind.
Welcome back to the Revere Review. And uh, in this segment, we are going to focus on programs that are produced within the city of Revere by Revere citizens and members of Revere TV. And one of the programs that it's our pleasure to introduce to you uh, th in this week's segment is the program produced and hosted by Morris Morris, and it's called Veterans Community, if I have it right. Yeah, yeah, Veterans Community. Morris, tell us a little bit about your program, some of the people that you've had on, and what you've got planned coming forward, uh, going forward. Well, just this past week, we had Senator Andy Petroselli, Senator Bob DeLeo, um, Dana Potter, and we have Joe Byron coming here on the 25th of March, and he was the one in charge of the honor flights. And people who would like to meet him are welcome to come down to the Revere Senior Center at 25 Winthrop Avenue, and you might get a chance to take a flight to Washington if you're a veteran of World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. So you're going to be doing a program on the honor flight so people will get to learn more about that on one of your programs. Right. He, he, Joe Byron will be on the Revere TV community okay. show on the 25th of March. Right. How often are you doing these programs? Are you doing them weekly? They were supposed to be done every two weeks, one. But what happened is people got drift of it, and a lot of them come over to me. They say they like to be on the show, and we love to have them. Thank you very much, Morris. And I think uh, this, this veteran community program that you have is a great program, and it is a wonderful thing. And I'm sure all the veterans in the city are, are so happy to see this getting mentioned in, in, in prominence. Right, you know, and with, I want to thank the you TV. for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure and an honor, actually. <laughs> thank you. So one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we covered today in our, our conversation about your show is the work that Eileen is doing, and uh, with the mo it's the Women Veterans Memorial. Is that correct? Of, of World I, War II. Of World War II. Right. Eileen, <clears throat> why don't you go ahead and explain what it's all about and, and the work that you're doing? All right. Well, the work I'm doing is uh, to dedicate a memorial to World War are to revere women veterans and we're going to have that placed on the American Legion lawn and if you care to donate and uh, you can send the donations to the People's United Bank at 310 Broadway Revere and make your checks out to the Revere Women's World War II Memorial and that would certainly be appreciated. Uh, any amount of money is certainly greatly appreciated. Tell um, us about some of this material that you brought. All right, you. well, uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, I do have a list, and I'm not going to read it now, a list of 146 women that were uh, that were available to me. And now, if you know of anyone else that uh, you know that was uh, a veteran, a woman veteran, World War II, please get in touch with me at the, at the Revere Senior Center and I'll check the list to make sure their name is on yeah. it. Is this a list available anywhere online? Can no, anybody, not yet. If they wanted to check the list out and see if the names are out there? No, it was written in the Revere Journal okay. at one time, but right. that's uh, otherwise not. Okay. And um, I'm soliciting not only in Revere, but nationwide. In fact, let me read this little letter. Please. To you. It says, the White House, Washington. Dear Mrs. Marullo, on behalf of Mrs. Obama, I would like to thank you for your thoughtful letter. While we cannot fulfill your request, we wish you the best in your endeavors and thank you for your interest. Americans wishing to apply for federal funds are welcome to visit www.grants.gov. Please know that Mrs. Obama greatly appreciates your efforts and sends you her best wishes. Again, thank you for writing, the Secretary. And this was in a response to a letter that you sent that to the I White House? To, yeah, I sent to the White House. I also sent to uh, uh, the mayor of Boston's mm -hmm. wife. I haven't heard from her yet. And I sent to the Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll hear from her also. So the White House itself wasn't able to donate, but they gave you some direction they, as to where to go to exactly. maybe get some, some help. Yes, a wonderful oh. website. Great. Yeah. And, and what other support have you gotten from, from around the state and so forth? Well, uh, we, uh, certainly all the, the local officials, they were very generous. And those that haven't given, I uh, will appreciate if they would give. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've sent to all, anyone and everyone that I c had their address to, I sent to. I, so nationwide, not only I, in I, and I And I received one of those donation <laughs> requests this week, and you, you'll be receiving a check from oh, me well, as nice. well. Thank so, you. No, it's my pleasure. Please, Morris, go. 
Last night we had a function, thanks to our <coughs> lovely Mayor Dan Rizzo at the Casa Lucia. He let me go around and collect money for this beautiful lady. And Thank we're going to give you a, not a check, but cash of 220 plus dollars when you leave here today, which is the money I collected. So Mayor Dan Rizzo, and the people of Revere that were there, thank you. There you um, go. Morris, don't wait till I leave. Let me have it right now. <laughs> I got to run out and get it. <laughs> That's wonderful. God bless you, um, in, in, in your plans, when would you expect to be at a point where you're going to be able to build this memorial? Do you have a, a timetable that you're working well, on? Well, we, we figure hopefully uh, early in the fall. In the fall, okay. It, we don't want to interfere with anything that's already scheduled. Yep. By the, uh, C by Nick Ball, we don't mm -hmm. want to yep. interfere with any right, of with that. With the Vietnam Wall coming Yeah, yep. uh, not the wall, none of that. So we want to have it later in the fall, and it'll be the women's thing. All right, so it's a wonderful cause. It's a great memorial. Um, and, and, and I guess one of the questions that I also had was, is that um, relative to this memorial, are there memorials in other states to women from uh, World War II? Well, veterans? as far as I know, and, and this may not be uh, correct, but I know that one city close by has a small, in the, on top of the ground, like a little seat dedicated to the women. Mm -hmm. Another one has uh, a plaque in a building that is dedicated to the women, and that's as far as I know. Right, they don't so, have the names listed. Yeah, yeah. And, and what prompted you Obviously, you're a veteran, I, and, I am a veteran. And, 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 and so was there any sort of action, event, or whatever that prompted you to say, you know, we need to do a memorial? Yeah, what, what, well, what? I am a veteran. I was at uh, Walter Reed during World War II, which was the amputation center mm -hmm. for the Army. And in fact, I treated a local man here in Chelsea that was an amputee. But let me just quickly read, uh, uh, at last year's Memorial Day services, I read aloud some of the names of men from Revere who served and died in World War II. It brought back memories of boys whom I had danced with at Spanish Gables, I had ice skated with on the Olive uh, Street pits, and swam in Revere Beach with many of them in my younger days. I thought how wonderfully reading the names refreshed my memories. And then I wondered if my sister, Lois Haydock, or my cousin, Eleanor Dillon, or the other 146 Revere women veterans who also served during World War II would ever be remembered for the services. And that's how the thought of a woman's memorial began. There you go. Yep. That 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 says it all right that's there. Okay. Right. So that and that's exactly what I was trying to understand. And that that's fantastic. You know when you when you have a thought and an idea and then you bring it to fruition and you make it real. Right. That's fantastic and and I applaud you so much for oh, for, for your you effort and, and Mara's for your work and and helping to promote this effort. And and in this we have a wonderful picture which we will scan and and, and show at some point, but this is you Eileen at, yes, at that point. That's yeah. when I couldn't you recognize me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a wonderful photo. All right, thank you. You also mentioned to me, uh, relative to veterans history and so forth, um, that there's an event coming up on April 13th at Romney Marsh. Right. You want to talk about that? Uh, yeah. Jeff Perlman, who's in charge of actually, that does a lot of those events on there, is going to be honoring 13 slaves, I believe, of the Civil War that were never honored. So on April the 13th, all these people over there are welcome to come down to the Rundy Marsh Memorial at 12 o'clock and yep. join our services. And if, if, if memory again serves me, um, uh, I think that the event or the significance of that date is, is that it's the anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation. Correct. Um, and, and I'm not going to do the math to figure out how many years it is, but, but part of the Emancipation Proclamation, for those who may not remember, of course, was the freeing of slaves. Um, and the fact that there are 13 slaves, they figured this is a great way to, to commemorate that, that, that event and to, to, to raise awareness about the fact that in the Romney Marsh Burial Cellar Ground, burial ground, we actually have 13 slaves mm -hmm. buried right. there. Yep. Thank That's you for putting it that amazing. a lot good. <clears throat> All right, wonderful. Well, Morris, thank you for your work and thank your you. program. Look forward to, uh, to seeing more as, as time goes by. And Eileen, Thank you so much for your effort in, in, oh, in getting this mar memorial established, and I look forward to attending the, the uh, dedication ceremony later Absolutely. on this year. Absolutely. I'll send you the first invitation. All right, that would be great. Thank All you right. both very much. Thank Our you. pleasure. Okay, well, for this segment of uh, The Revere Review um, on, on independently produced programs, um, 
once again, we'll see you later. And now, for your Revere Sports Review, here's Peter DiGiulio and Mike Hinojosa. Hello, and welcome to uh, the first edition of Revere Sports on Revere TV, your source in Revere for local sports. Tonight, I'm Peter DiGiulio, and to my left is Mike Hinojosa, and we're going to talk about um, a roundup of the winter sports season. And to start off, Mike, since your daughter played on the girls' basketball team, why don't you take uh, and give us a recap of the, of the girls' basketball? Uh, yeah, the, the winter season capped off with an exciting season uh, by the Lady Patriots. Uh, they were off to an 11-9 record and uh, off to the tournament with a uh, 14th seed, uh, which they hosted, or I'm sorry, which they went out and played Westford Academy. They were the third seed. Yep. Um, they did lose, but um, it was a great season. Hard-working girls. Making uh, the tournament is, is the goal of every team. And, yep. and, and when you make it, you get over that first, that first hump, and then you try to, you know. You, so um, just making the tournament makes it a successful season, I think. That's right. But they had more highlights. Um, Co-captain Gina Rustiano was named the uh, Northeast Conference MVP, which is uh, a gigantic highlight. Not to mention she scored her 1,000th uh, point in that um, um, final game in the tournament game. So uh, a lot of highlights there, um, especially for Gina. Great year. Yeah, uh, and, you know, and the co-captains were, were her and um, Caitlin Caramello, who, uh, who uh, knowing her, um, ha had an, a season. I was watching the boys most of the time, but she had a, um, a, a, a better than average season, I would think. But I think we would do no justice. Um, Gina won the awards, but the um, we can honestly say that Caitlin Caramello was the uh, nuts and bolts of that team. I mean, she was the hardest working girl that I've ever seen for the last four years um, and did all of the little things, um, weak side rebounds. I mean, I can't imagine. Um, she averaged a double-double for the last two years, which is very impressive at yep, that level. for high school. Yep. Um, yeah. And some of those rebounds, some of those 22 rebound games that she had went maybe a little unnoticed, so we just want to. Yeah, I guess shout out to Kate. And, and the other seniors, Mike, were? Um... Adriana Borriello, um, Danielle Smith, uh, Amy Rogers, who, um, uh, you know, her play has over the last couple of years. Great I mean, contribution, great athlete. Yep. Um, it's going to be an all-star in lacrosse probably this year. Yep. And uh, Gianna Bua. Yep. So that will wrap okay, that up. Okay, you know, Revere girls basketball. Let's go on to boys basketball. Both our sons played for that team. And even though you hear it's, a, you know, it's a, an 8-12 and 12 record, um, that, that's a team that, um, that, that lost uh, five games by three or less points. Down and the stretch. Down the stretch. And, yep. and you know, a, 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 a roll one way, a ref's call another way, especially in Beverly, yep. 1.6 seconds tie game and they get a, a, a call against them um, and you never blame the refs for a loss but in that case put the whistle away as far as I'm concerned they could have very easily been 12 and 8 and made the tournament for the first time in a long time yep hockey boys hockey was young this year they had a few seniors um, but they were young new coach Joe Ciccarello and um, you know they, they didn't have a great record but um, they were in a lot of games. They, they, they had a lot of close games and um, uh, had a shutout on TV. We had our first game on cable on, on uh, uh, the, the senior night, and they ended up shutting out the Lynn team. They had seniors, um, uh, Gerard Sochetti, TJ McDonald, Chris Curtis, Nick Pinabella, Nico Luisi, and John Papsidora, um, all-star goalie uh, for them this year. And, you know, Joe Chick looks forward to um, drawing from the middle school program, which, which this year, Mike, was expanded to 25 games, um, all at Salem State. We were all young kids, and um, it, it's just a great experience for them to play against the teams in the Northeast Conference. Pete, any time you continue to add, so, you know, I know our hockey program for a long period of time, you know, we lose kids to, um, you know, other programs. Yep. Uh, the middle school team is a great way to begin that feeder program, you know, right up through, uh, through the high school. Neither one of us are hockey guys, Mike, but we pay no, attention to what the kids do. Once again, good kids, good coaches, 
great facility over there at the um, at the Cronin Rink. C regardless of what the records are, let's say this right now, Mike, the kids that play sports at Revere High School are all good kids. Good kids. You, you can't say that about a lot of other schools. The kids that come out are good kids. And, and they have to maintain a certain grade point average and, and all that stuff. But, you know, you, they're, they're, they're respectful kids at every level. And uh, We say it every time we're on the air, Peter. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. And I know I got a big moat, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it from, from the studios of Revere TV. Volunteer. Come on and be a part of it. It's fun, and uh, it's part of your city. Okay? Thanks for joining us tonight, and uh, you've been watching Revere TV. Your source in Revere for anything you want. Tune in. Channels 8, 9, and 22 on your dial. Good night. Good night, folks. Welcome back to this segment to highlight upcoming events in the city. First event to note is our Cupid Splash on Saturday, March 23rd. Hundreds of brave, maybe crazy souls will raise money for free programs and activities put on by Save the Harbor, Save the Bay by taking the plunge into the icy waters of Revere Beach and Boston Harbor. The plunge will take place at 10 a.m. Last year's Cupid Splash raised over $30,000. The brave souls who take the plunge will be treated to some warm chowder from Kelly's Roast Beef. A larger post-splash celebration will take place in South Boston, hosted by Harpoon Ale. One lucky splasher will also receive free tickets from JetBlue. For more information on this event, go to www.cupidsplash.com. And another event to announce is the April 26th, 27th, and 28th kickoff of the second annual City of Revere Fitness Challenge, with official weigh-in for all participants. The challenge is a six-week program and competition with winners to be announced in three categories at the end of the program. The categories are weight loss, loss of waistline inches, and loss of body fat. Revere on the Move is once again partnering with millions of muscles and a host of other fitness organizations across the city. For more information, call 339-226-1283. So that does it for this, our inaugural episode of the Revere Review. We hope that you enjoyed the program and that you will continue to enjoy it going forward. For more information about our TV program, please visit us at revertv.org or like us on Facebook. Thank you for watching. I'm Ed DeVoe. And I'm Debbie DiGiulio. Take care. <laughs>